Hey y'all, happy Saturday. Today I'm going over my easy fried chicken cutlets recipe and I'm going to start by showing you how to make chicken cutlets. So cutlets are just thinner slices of chicken breast. You can make them by getting a boneless skinless chicken breast, laying it on your cutting board and then putting your palm on the top of the chicken. You're going to press your palm down and as you're pressing you're going to slide your knife right through the center until it is cut all the way through. And then you'll have two slices that are generally around the same size. The one in the back is a little thicker. If I wanted, I could just pound that down with like a mallet under some saran wrap and get them even, but that's close enough for me. So to show you again, I put the chicken breast on the cutting board, put my hand up there, and then I start slicing while I'm applying pressure with my hand evenly the whole way across. And there you go. So the flour dredge is all-purpose flour, about a cup and a half of that, and cornstarch, about half a cup of that. Someone needs to invent a way to neatly get cornstarch out of its packaging. I, I absolutely hate how it gets everywhere. I seasoned this batch with a little bit of annatto powder. That's not really for seasoning or flavor, it's just for color. I get tempted to leave my chicken in the oil too long just to get it like very deeply golden brown, which then overcooks it. And I like overcooked chicken, but nobody else does. So I also added in seasoned salt and some dragon's dust. That is a powder that I was sent by some folks on Instagram. I will link it in the caption. It is really delicious and I can recommend it if you like super spicy food. I seasoned the cutlets that I made the day before. That's why I was wearing something different um, with this same seasoning, seasoned salt and the pepper powder. Just want to make sure they have a good coating of them. And then I'm going to mix them into the wet dredge. So the wet dredge, I've been playing with different ways to fry or dredge chicken before you fry it for years, just because I really love fried chicken. Um, and a few months ago, I saw someone on Instagram, I believe it's Spiced and Sauced is what her name is. I saw her use egg whites and sparkling water, and I had never seen that before, so I wanted to try it. I did. Um, it was really good. I really liked how it turned out. The crumb was a little bit lighter and more crispy than crunchy. Um, slightly different texture. It, it was just really good. You'll have to try it. Um, but I tried it again with just the egg whites because I didn't have any sparkling water. And I really didn't find that much of a difference. So for my recipe, I'm just calling for egg whites that have been whisked until they're frothy. I use my immersion blender to do that, but you can use a regular whisk and some elbow grease. best part of fried chicken to me is the crunchy craggies the little crunchy bits that like fall off the chicken onto the bottom of the box so in order to get more of those on my chicken i will take a little bit of whatever my wet dredge is and sprinkle it into the flour you saw me doing that by just kind of letting the excess drip off of the chicken into the bowl and then mixing it together with my fingers. That just allows it, if you if you have experience frying chicken, then you'll know that the last batch is gonna have more of those crunchy crackies than the first batch. This is just to make sure that the first batch has, you know, a sufficient amount. Um, and then I flour the chicken. I flour it by putting in the bowl and then using the backs of my fingers to press it down into the flour. So I put the chicken in the flour, then I sprinkle a little bit of flour over the top of the chicken, and then I use the backs of my fingers to press the flour into both sides of the chicken. I flip it and do that a couple of times until I'm satisfied with the coverage. You don't need a super sick, super sick, a super thick coating in order to come out with really nice crispy fried chicken. Um, too thick actually, and it'll it won't taste good, not to me at least. After all the chicken is floured, I let it rest on a plate while I preheat the oil. I'm using peanut oil. You can use whatever high smoke point oil you want to use. Um, I like to test the oil by sticking in the handle of a wooden utensil. You see how it's bubbling around the edges? That's how the chicken is going to respond when we put it in the oil. We want it to bubble gently, steadily but gently. If it doesn't bubble at all, that means the oil is not hot. And if it bubbles really violently, that means it is too hot. And you want it to be a good temperature because you don't want to have to be afraid of the oil. 
a lot of making sure that your breading doesn't come off in the oil is how you add the chicken. So you're gonna wanna either lay it in very gently like I just did, or you can lower it in using like a wire rack or a net. Um, or if you're using like a larger vessel than I am, when you put your chicken in, you can kind of sweep it through the oil. Like don't let it go, submerge it almost completely and then just move it through the oil before you drop it. And that kind of helps the crust set against the chicken rather than fall off. And this will help so you won't have as much flour at the bottom of the pan when you're done. Now, as far as frying, boneless, skinless chicken, you generally know it's done when it floats on the top of the oil. That's not 100%, but it's it's a pretty solid rule. If you're not sure, you're going to want to use a meat thermometer. It's 165 internal is what's safe for chicken. Or um, you can cut it open and just check. But I cook these chicken breasts, uh, each cutlet, for about, I'll say about 10 to 12 minutes each. And I was multitasking. I was also making the broccoli cheddar orzo recipe that's also on deepfried90.com. I posted that YouTube tutorial last week. So I'll try to add a, a link to the screen so you can tap it if you want to see. But I served those together and they made for a absolutely delicious meal. As always, thank you for spending a few minutes of your day. Oh my God, it was six and a half minutes. So you spent a lot of minutes with me today. I appreciate you. Have a great rest of your day.